Okay, I'm back. So what I've got here is I have two strips. Um, they're measured around about 90 centimeters each and they're two and a half inches wide. And I have turned in a quarter of an inch on both of those. So they're gonna be my handles. And I've also cut um, wadding to go in the center of them, which I'll just place in. I'm not gonna iron it in. And what I'm, I'm not going to glue it in. What I'm going to do is just place them out like this. And I'll grab one and I'll place that in the center. The wadding will be a little bit longer, which is fine because I can just trim it off. Um, and it could be a bit too wide as well. But the idea is I will then turn it in again and then again. And I'll end up with that sort of look. Okay, so if you would like to, you can turn in just one side. So you can turn one side in, and then you've got the other one to fold over. Um, there's many different ways you can do this. Uh, none are right or wrong, they're all just a preference. So you can fold it over like that as well, which means you might want to um, trim off the wadding a little bit thinner than what I have. I've cut it half the size of the, um, so one and a quarter um, of the, um, the actual thing. The other option is to not have any wadding in at all and just have them sewn down. I like the wadding, it's a little bit softer on the shoulders. Um, and uh, it, like everyone's a little bit different. You can put pre-made handles on it, um, you can have rope, you could have all sorts of things. There's, there's no right and wrong, they're all going to be your own personal preference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fiddle around with these and I'm then going to sew them down. Um, I might actually even just trim them a little bit smaller. Uh, I'll grab my big scissors and might even cut them down so that they're smaller at the thinner again and like I say it's it's um, it's not rocket science this I don't I tend to be a little bit rough when it comes to these sort of things I'm not a perfectionist so to speak so I'll just throw that one out of the way get the next one Trim it down. Um, my poor scissors get used for lots of things. These, so there's only one that I use for just fabric alone. That's my red handle one. So sometimes these get a little bit of a bashing. So I've cut those two down. So then I can lay them in there. If you feel like you need to glue them, go ahead and glue. I personally don't because I don't like the glue going through the uh, the machine and I don't like it in my needles so um, I'm going to place that in the middle and then I'm going to turn that over and turn it over again until I get it there and then that's going to be my um, starting point. I'm just going to grab a pin and just pin that down if I can through all layers then I go this way and because I've got the I'll turn that pin around the other way so <laughs> there we are I've got it out of my mouth now so that I can actually get it under the foot and I'm, I'm literally going to, you can do a decorative stitch, but I'm just going to do a straight stitch. Um, just get it going. And I'll probably do one on either side of this as well, just for a bit of extra support. And as I go, I just bring that in like that, so they overlap. I do a little bit at a time. I bring that to about there, that to about there. And I just go nice and steady. No, no, um, no rushing on this one. It might seem like I am, but I'm not. I might turn the machine down a little bit. And you can hear it making all the noise. 
it's because it's going through so many layers. Um, you can also put your stitch on a longer length if you want it more decorative instead of having the small length. Um, try and do it as straight as you possibly can. Um, and like I say, when it comes down to it, no one's going to sit there and go, oh, that, that looks horrible because the stitch is wonky. It's not going to happen. And if they do say that, that's when you take them off your Christmas card list. If you want this, uh, the handles to be wider, then you need to start with, say, a 5 inch width um, strip and do it that way. Exact same process, but just have it all wider. And you can see I'm coming to the end of this bit of wadding, um, which is fine. I'm going to just throw in another piece in a minute. my second piece, got it ready to go, I'm going to get this one and stitch that over to about, about, oh, about an inch and a half from the end where my wadding finished so that I can just sort of slide the next one in. I'll overlap them just a little just so that they, there's no gap in between them. And a little bit of tweaking going on here. And put that over. There we go. So now there's this one. Oh, I missed it. Let's go throw it back in. I didn't quite get there. It's going to make it difficult. Um, I might just cut off there. I might have missed a couple. Yeah, I did. I'll try again. I might um, just pin it this time because it looks like I've not quite come over with the overlap. So I will just throw that pin back in there and mend what I did there. Fingers crossed, I've caught it this time. Um, some people make uh, like tunnels and then, you know, like a tube, and then they um, turn them around the right way. I couldn't be bothered with all the trying to pull it out um, things, so. Display. Now like I say you can do a decorative stitch and that way it's sort of zigzag or something like that. That way it sort of catches both sides a bit, a bit better than what I'm doing. Um, but like I said I'm going to do two or three more lines across the top of it. I'll have a quick look at it in a minute. And I'm almost at the end. I'll do the one and then I'm going to do the next one.
Okay, and that's one strap. All right, so you can see there, it's been stitched a few times on either side, and now we're going to do the next one.
So neaten up any threads or anything at all that you've um, had to stitch down some bubble ups and things like that, like I'm doing right now. Some bits where they didn't quite catch. Just want to make sure that they're all in and on. And really, the stitching's there just to make it a bit stronger. Um, that'll be on the inside of the handle. Um, just neaten that off as well. And these two ends, I'm just going to make sure they're also the same length. Sometimes they're not. And just clean them off. Okay. So I've got two that are the same, reasonably the same, ready to go. I'll just clean up this a little bit and then I'll bring the bag over. Now, <clears throat> the bag, it's inside out, so that's the inside of the front. Then I've put the lining. Now I've put the lining right side facing the right side of the bag front um, and you knew I joined them before. Now I have also started pinning one side and then I realised, hang on a second, I haven't got my handles in there. So to measure for your handles you've got your half, like your seam here and here and then if you grab that side and join your seams together like this, okay, then you'll find the halfway point on either side and just pop a pin in there like I've got one here and I've got one over here. So then what you do is, that's my halfway point there, that blue one. You can mark it if you want to or you can put in um, a specific colour. I'm just going to pop two pins there because I've got other pins there as well. Then you want to mark from the centre about two and a half to three inches either side of the centre. I'd go two and a half, all right? So you get your ruler and you go, you mark that at two and a half there. So then we put this one here and then the five inch mark about there okay that is what we're going to leave open now an inch from either side is where we're going to put the handle so we're going to start it here okay an inch from that last pin that you put in so I'm going to just that one there. I'm going to take these other ones out to stop confusing you. Okay, so I've got my center. I've got five inches open there. That's where I'm going to um, leave it open to turn around. Then I've got the start one inch from there from that uh, seam uh, where that uh, opening is going to start from. One inch from there is where my handle is going to go. Now, when you put your handle in, you're going to need to keep it reasonably straight and make sure you've got the right side facing down. So you want to have, um, we want to have it inside the actual bag between the this, between these uh, the lining and the actual bag front. So I'm just going to tuck him in there, and grab him, and pull him through. Just like that. I've kept it straight the whole way around. If you're not sure, just put your hand in and feel to make sure there's no twists or turns in it. Should be plenty of room. I've got my gloves on, it's not helping. And then you want to just push that down, put it at that last pin there, and make sure you've got a little bit of it sticking up into the seam area. So I'm going to just make it straight, All right, so it's going to go there and I'm going to get that pin that I had there for that one inch mark from that and I'm actually going to put it in the centre of that handle. 
This also makes sure that your handles um, are not in the way when you're sewing. So I've got that there, just making sure she's still straight. That goes alongside that and up a little, just like I did before. You can see how it's there. Grab that pin, stick it in the center and um, you've got it in there. Now, the other side, because we don't need an opening, all I'm going to do is measure three and a half inches from the center on the other side. So I'm going to turn it over. I've got my handle and I'm going to feed that in. I've already marked my center so I'm just going to feed it in that way. All right. Oops a daisy. I'll get my ruler. I'm going to mark the pin. Oops a daisy, wrong way around. Three and a half from that center pin and that'll be the start of where my handle needs to be. About there. Now, if you aren't accurate with this, don't don't panic. It's no one's going to say, "Oh, well, that's half an inch out on that side." And like I said before, if they do, they're off the Christmas card list. We don't need that kind of negativity in our lives, especially at the moment. All right, so I'm going to feed that down there. And feed it in until it gets about half an inch above that edge of that fabric in between the lining and the front of the bag. I'm going to pin that in now. I'm going to do the same with this side and just feed it in like that. And just make sure the lining's straightish. <laughs> and then again, it's half an inch out of the edge like that and that's done. Now then what you need to do is just make sure that's all in there out of the way. Pin the rest of your bag down. Make sure your seams are joined because it looks pretty nasty when your seams aren't joined. Um, I do have a habit of not caring whether my seams are joined in my handbags or bags because um, a lot of the time my bags end up get, getting thrown around and used for um, carrying stock. So, but if you want it to look nice, join your seams and make sure they all line up. If you find that you've got a bit of slack in your binding, just in your binding, sorry, in your lining, just pull it up a bit, like pull it up to, to take the slack out and you'll find it'll, um, it'll sit flat. I'm just finding pins. Now, Remember the other side how I had those two pins with a crossover? So I'll show you. See how they're like a crossover? I don't know if you can see that there. There's one, two, and they cross over each other. That's the side that I'm going to start on. And I'm going to start south of that. So there it is there. This is south. And I'm going to start here. And I'm going to stitch forward back again and then stitch around. And I'm giving myself a good quarter inch seam. The other thing too is if you can take out the bed of your machine like that, so you've just got this, um, that makes it a lot easier too. Um, so I'm going to come in, just move my pin out of the way a little, needle down in that spot, take the pin out, stitch a couple forward and then back. And I'm going to slow the machine down. There's a lot for it to go through and it's going to probably make some really grunty noises if I go too fast over some of these areas. And if I'm running over pins, of course, it's not going to like that much either. Just move that out of the way. All right. Now, I didn't get around to neatening up this, but I'm going to push it down to one side, just so you know. Um, if you had to neaten it up, it wouldn't have been so bulky like mine is. That's alright. Won't see it in the end anyway. So just remember, if you come back to that 
um, those two needles, uh, pins, sorry, that are crossed over, um, you've gone too far. You need to go back a bit or unstitch a little bit so that you've got a good size opening. And then we're going to top stitch. There'll be no hand sewing. <laughs> I avoid hand sewing if I can. Um, again, I don't have enough time to hand sew. I've gone all the way around and I'm coming up to that pin that is two and a half inches from the two crossed over pins and I've sewn to that, I've taken it out and that's there and that's my centre ones, I can take them out now, fingers crossed. We can now turn it the right way around and if I've done everything right, um, we can then top stitch down and we're finished. So we grab the, it's a bit hard, oh gosh, so it's all got to come through. So while I have a struggle with this, you can struggle with yours too. <laughs> so imagine if you left anything smaller than a five inch hole, it, you'd be beside yourself. 7 inch I think we left it in the end wasn't it oh. and because of the bag batting it's quite stiff so be prepared for that oh. try and see you imagine trying to do this with those handles I'm going to um, oh. I'm going to tear it if I'm not careful grab that and pull it through Oops -a -days. You can <laughs> hear the stitching pulling, which is fine because I'm going to top stitch over it again. Ugh. There it goes again. Come on, baby. So I've got wadding, I've got two layers, two rows, two um, thicknesses of bag batting. It's quite a lot in there. Right. Finally, I'll get it through eventually. Let's hope I've done this right. I think I have. I think so. Oh, there we go. With more to come through. Oh, that was hard work. Get my hand out of the way. And I'll just push out those corners. Um, because it's quite thick, you don't need a sharp object to push them out. You've got to be careful you don't poke a hole in them. So, just push those corners out like I just have, like that. Get your handles out of the way. Missed the corner. Oh. Got them out. There we go. Got the handles out of the way. Tuck in my lining. <laughs> so. Now, what you'll see is some of the lining sitting on the top. Now, this is a this is a, a, a definite, if you like it that way, you can. Personally, I won't be because that, well, I can actually. I might do that. So I'm going to go to the iron and I'm going to press it um, and figure out where I'm going to put it and whether I'm going to have some lining sitting at the top like a, um, I don't know, like a decoration. So I'm just going to... So there, or whether I'm going to full on turn it over, which I'm thinking I might actually do. So I'm going to go and press this down this seam here and, um, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've got it all flattened out and pinned down and you can see that there. So now I'm going to do a top stitch. So I'm going to do it about roughly a quarter inch 
from the top and I'm going to change the stitch length to around about three and a half, three and a half I think, I'll, I'll try that. Now I'm starting somewhere in the middle at the back so I can end there. Just remember to take out your pins as you go. Just make sure my little doodah is down on my walking foot. So I'm just going to slow it down a bit more because now I'm going through even more thread and fabric and layers. I've made sure all my handles, because if you're going to change any direction of your handles or anything, now's when you do it before you stitch all this down. Otherwise you, you, you'll end up coming up to a whole heap of mess trying to get it all undone. It's been a bit of an experience trying to record this on my own um, and trying to get the camera right and all that sort of thing so I apologise if you've not been able to see as much as you wanted to. I do have a pattern which I will show you guys um, that will go through this sort of process um, for the bag. Um, it's just called uh, Computer Tote. I'll, um, I'll grab it in a minute and show you once I go through this. And I do like to um, put two rows of top stitching on this. Um, you can also use a variegated thread if you want to put a bit more bling or you could even couch it, go figure. So, And as you can see, I'm just taking it little bit by little bit. And just make sure I can get that needle, or pin I should say. And I'm making sure also that my handles are in the right direction. As I go. So, fabric I've used is two fat quarters of plain fabric um, well actually uh, one fat quarter of plain fabric for the front and the back so that's two of those yep so that's right and then two batik for the inside oops a daisy just hit the pin um, or you can have the decorative fabric on the outside but because I'm doing the couching I went for the plain everyone's different and there's no right and wrong and that's the main thing to remember. So especially when you're coming into these seams, you really need to take it steady. Try not to fly into it 100 mile an hour. There's no race. Um, just making sure all the seams are down. Especially where you have that opening, just make sure you're catching all those seams as you go through. That's why I do the second round of stitches, just in case I've missed. Um, and it looks a little bit more finished. So the second round of stitches will be right on the edge um, of the bag. The back stitch, just to knot off. Cut it, get rid of any threads that are in the way, look unsightly, especially on the inside. Just trim it up, that's it. Um, a bit of thread there I'll trim off. Alright, I'm hoping that'll clean up on the next round. So the next round I'm going to again oh, lift up. So this is right on the edge. Um, and like I say, you can do a decorative, you can do straight, you can do zigzag, you can do whatever you like. I'm just going to do a 3.5mm stitch just so that I can get some, um, some stability to the, the bag top and the join. So the handles don't, I don't want the handles to come out. <laughs> so once I've got this around, I'm pretty much done. Um, if you wanted pockets or anything like that in this bag, uh, you would do that to the lining before you put the lining in. Um, and it's quite easy to put a pocket or something in. It's not um, hard. Um, what 
else to say that I can tell you. Um, but anyway, you make this. Look, it's fun. It's quick. I've done it in a few hours. Didn't really have much of a master plan. Just knew I wanted to show you some uh, couching. And that's what I've done. And then I thought, well, let's turn it into a bag. So originally I just started to do this as a couching video. And you've ended up with a, a little bit of a bag at the end. So that is that. I'll just zoom that. Whoops, a daisy right out. There we go. So there's the bag. It's a nice big bag. Um, the handles there. Like I say, you can, if you're wanting to, do thicker handles. You can make it square and put a zipper in the top if you want to. All those options are absolutely fine. You can do decorative stitches along the top. Me personally, I was fine with just doing a straight stitch. Um, but I have a bag that I'm quite happy with. And once I get to use it a bit, it'll settle down into its position and um, it's done so um, thanks for joining me I appreciate all the time you've spent sitting here listening to me yap away and watching me sew and I look forward to seeing photos of your bags done if you would like me to draw out this design I can do that too and I might even pop that in the, um, the comments as well you can download a um, PDF so you can see I am not really, oops a daisy, uh, not really dressed for the occasion today. I've, I've sort of been, look at my hair and everything, I've sort of been just um, rummaging around the sewing room and the house today. But I reckon that's awesome. Don't you reckon that's awesome? It's nice and bright, hey? Wouldn't the kids love that? That's the bag. Now, I'll show you the other pattern that I have. So here's a pattern for, it's called laptop tote, um, here's a pattern for the same sort of bag, a lot bigger to take a laptop and that's on my website at um, www.michellespatchwork.com, it's only $15 for it um, and basically the same sort of thing as what I've done here. Um, except I think I might have done a binding along the top, yes I did. Um, and you, you can choose to do that or not and I did a different colour at the bottom of the bag than the top so I joined on um, the pieces together. It all works the same way so if you wanted to you can go and buy that online on michellespatchwork.com or you can make your own. See ya!